I regret not being able to be with you in person, but I welcome this opportunity to put on the record the ITUC's commitment to developments in the care economy. There is no question that women's participation in work is both a right and it's probably the largest productivity measure that any economy can unleash. But it raises a whole set of questions about how we care for family members, whether it's childcare, whether it's elder care, whether it's health or education or other community services. And so the care economy must in fact be accompanied by a set of policies that recognise that when men and women are increasingly in work, when our community requires support and education, then all of these issues need to be taken into account to build a dignified community base, but also a, an economy that works. There are three areas of interest for us. The first is, of course, to support women's work, and that requires childcare in particular. It requires elder care increasingly as demographics change throughout the world. We need to see serious investment in care across the demographic spectrum. The second area is to acknowledge that the care economy is increasingly being privatised. Unless we take account of both paid and unpaid work and look to the issues of the exploitation of migrant workers, whether it's in developing economies or increasingly in developed economies, then we are simply creating indecent work, unacceptable forms of work, as we actually uh, access the right for participation of women as well as men in the formal economy. The growing informality of care, the privatisation of care, these things are exploiting workers. I'm proud to say that on the back of Convention 189, an historic convention for domestic workers, the uh, ITC's 12 by 12 campaign is already taking fruit. We are seeing uh, now seven countries ratifying Convention 189, putting in place labour laws that both recognise and formalise the work of domestic workers. But we must go further than this. We must look to see where minimum wages, social protection floor, and indeed labour laws that cover all work actually uh, are, are used to formalise the informal sector, to provide decent work across the care economy. And we must then look at the opportunities if we formalise work in the care economy, in the context particularly of uh, the most incredible crisis of unemployment. The financial crisis, now a bitter crisis of unemployment for many, many working families across the world. Then, in addition to other sectors, the care economy can deliver real jobs, quality jobs, decent work. We are doing the research now, but I'm sure you understand that the multiplier effect of investing in jobs in the care economy actually is also beyond those jobs themselves and the uh, contribution to demand and the tax uh, contribution that the multiplier effect generates other jobs. So you asked me for three recommendations. I actually first of all suggest that all our economies need to rethink the model of growth that takes account of paid and unpaid work. We have a role to play whether it's governments or the social partners of employers and workers. Care facilities, that's the central piece. Childcare, elder care facilities, this must underpin the fact that we need to reconcile work and family. We need also, of course, the policies that make it possible for women and men to share care, particularly of children, but also of ageing parents and siblings. And that requires secure but flexible working arrangements where people can manage the work and family balance everybody should be able to aspire to. The second recommendation goes to providing rights and protections to the millions of workers in the care sector. I've talked to you about domestic workers, Convention 189, but fundamental rights, fundamental provisions of decent work must be available to all care workers. 
And the third recommendation is to work with us to assess the potential for job creation in the care sector. We need to create 600 million jobs within the decade. That's the ILO challenge. The care sector is a critical part of that. We need to put those jobs in place for the dignity of our own communities, but also for the opportunity for decent work for our young people increasingly excluded, our children and our grandchildren who want to be part of a secure future. Communities that are dignified, work that is secure, women and men that can seek work-life balance because they can in fact manage both work and care, and an economic payout that is absolutely critical at this point in what is the worst economic crisis we've faced since the Great Depression. The care economy, it's a policy setting agenda at the heart of a decent future. Thank you.